Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining our uh, webinar this morning, Automating Exemption Certificate Management to Defend Against Audit. This is uh, Mark Christensen. Appreciate you joining. Um, we'll begin the uh, presentation here right at uh, uh, the midpoint of the hour here in a couple minutes. So uh, give us a couple minutes for everybody else to join in and we'll begin shortly. Thanks again for joining. All right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, 10.30 Central Time here, uh, calling you from Minneapolis. This is Mark Christensen. Uh, I lead product marketing here at Sobos for our enterprise sales and use tax solutions. And uh, joining me today on our Automating Exemption Certificate Management webinar is uh, Jordan Meeks, one of our uh, awesome sales engineers and product experts to help take you through a, a quick overview of our latest uh, certificate management solution. Um, good morning again, everybody, from wherever you're joining. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to uh, to engage with us on this and learn a little bit more about our, our latest uh, solution. Jordan, you want to hit the, the next slide? We've got a lot to cram into the next 30 minutes here today and want to be efficient with everybody's time. So the agenda for the, this morning for this uh, quick 30-minute webinar is really just to talk quickly at a high level about some exemption certificate, common uh, exemption certificate challenges that we see uh, in the marketplace, and, and then really give you a sense of, of the cert manager solution and how you can take a more proactive approach uh, by utilizing this uh, technology to help streamline your certificate management process. And we'll break that down into really three uh, parts of the process, which is really centralizing the process, helping you manage it more effectively, and then giving you the tools to help defend uh, in case of an audit. And, and then we'll help hopefully have some time uh, left over at the end for Q&A. Uh, as we move through, we got a couple of housekeeping items here. Jordan, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, so today's webinar, again, it's a it's a quick 30-minute webinar, so we'll, we'll squeeze as much in as we can here. Uh, the, we'll hopefully save the last three to five minutes uh, have been reserved for some Q&A for everybody. Uh, the questions can be answered on your screen. You should see a panel uh, probably on the right-hand side, uh, which will give you the opportunity to go ahead and submit your questions. Uh, and you can do that at any time throughout the presentation as, as you're going through as they come up, and, and we'll try and cover as many of those as we can at the end. Uh, and one of the most frequent questions we always get is, will you uh, get a follow-up and a, 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 re, a uh, copy of the presentation and the recording afterwards? And the answer to that is, yes, you will. So with that, um, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so uh, just to cover off a couple of things before uh, handing it off to Jordan here. Um, one of the things we uh, really, as we talked to a, a lot of organizations um, over the past uh, year or two, one of the things that we're really noticing, uh, and this is borne out in some research that we did last spring with the Aberdeen Group, is that um, organizations across the board are really seeing an increase in audit frequency and scrutiny. And from the, the Aberdeen research that we did last um, last spring, you can see here, we asked a couple of different questions, which is, you know, are you noticing audit uh, in frequency increasing? And 40% uh, of the organizations that re responded to that said, yes, you know what, over the past two years, we've definitely seen an increase in audit, not only the frequency of audits, but also what auditors are asking for, what they're looking for, uh, looking for, uh, you know, more deep um, transactional level data, wanting to dig into our, our uh, reporting a, a little bit more than they have in the past. And so that's a definite trend that we're seeing. 
And we asked that same group, you know, as you look forward over the next two or three years, how are you thinking about that? And 58% of that said, yep, you know what, we feel like, you know, over the next three to five years, it's going to continue to increase. And so we're definitely, it's a trend that we're definitely seeing. And the sales and use tax piece of uh, the equation for states auditors in, in particular is really a piece that auditors are digging into more and more frequently as local state and local governments are really trying to figure out how do we um, maintain our revenue streams and close the gaps that we have in terms of making sure that we've got all the funding and the revenue coming in that we need. And what's the implication of that? So on the audit side of that, um, Jordan, if you want to go to the next slide, audit is definitely one of those and the risk associated with that is one of the key things that organizations are struggling with. But as we talk specifically about certificates and how they fit into that whole equation, the, another question that we asked in the Aberdeen research was, what are some of the biggest drains on the business of the overall sales and use tax compliance process? And you can see here exemption management of uh, customer exemption certificates was one of the key things that people really brought out as, hey, um, this is really one of the most difficult things for us to manage in terms of the time and effort that it takes to, to manage the exemption certificate management process. And you can see that was particularly acute for manufacturers, which is that green line there with 45% saying, you know what, this is really our number one issue related to this uh, the sales and use tax management process. And then you can see the response there also from uh, a big issue in retail and then the, the combined response from all respondents. So a couple of points there in terms of the certificate process, which is the increased risk uh, from that audit perspective, but then also just the time and effort that it takes to manage the process. And Jordan, you wanna to go to the next slide? And so why is it that this, this process is one of those things that is one of the most tough, you know, toughest parts of the process to manage. And, and what we find in terms of when we talk to organizations and some of the most common things that we see and we hear when we talk to um, different types of organizations is because most organizations are taking a fairly reactive approach to the exemption certificate management process. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, organizations are really trying to manage this across various locations. Um, if you're like a lot of the um, companies that uh, we talk to frequently, uh, and you probably are, uh, you've grown up uh, over time, uh, potentially through mergers and acquisitions, your business has been evolving, you've been implementing new types of technology solutions and different transaction processes, uh, potentially opening new business units in different geographies, and all those business changes come together to make the compliance process more difficult. And in particular with exemption certificate, certificates, that can make that process difficult where uh, across the organization, you may have different processes for who's actually even collecting the certificates, whether it's happening through sales reps out in the field. Um, if you're a retailer, it might be happening somewhere in the point of sale, uh, part of part of the your um, your ecosystem. It could be part of your uh, new customer setup that's happening within your finance team or your customer service team. So there's a lot of different ways people are collecting um, those those different certificates, and that may be happening in various locations. Uh, still, we see actually very frequently a lot of organizations still trying to manage the process completely manually, even with paper certificates and, and still using those uh, file cabinets. And uh, you can certainly imagine if, if you're in that type of a situation where you have a fairly dispersed organization, or even if you are uh, in an organization where you've got all the, the certificates coming into a central location, but you're still trying to manage that with paper uh, and in, in file cabinets, um, obviously going to have very limited visibility and, and ability to really work with those certificates and understand where your particular risk might be. Uh, more typically, we see organizations bringing the certificates in, going through some kind of a scanning or digi digital uh, process, and, and then storing those on a centralized server, which is uh, definitely an improvement, but in most cases, they're filed by state or, or some other meth method. Um, which is which is better, but still doesn't give you complete visibility to where your gaps might be, um, and and creates a, a process where it's not really connected with uh, how you're trying to do your determination, and you end up having two distinct um, uh, processes that that aren't really working together. Um, no visibility to missing invalid and, and expired certificates. So that's that's one of the biggest issues that we hear, right? And, and a lot of um, probably similar to what many of you are trying to to deal with in terms of managing this process is having a good sense of that visibility to where do I potentially have gaps? Um, how is our customer onboarding process working in terms of how we bring those certificates in? Do we have a good way for um, our, our, uh, new, uh, our new customers to actually submit those certificates? How do we know that we've actually received them? Are we holding orders be until we receive those certificates or are we actually processing and hoping that we collect the certificates on the back end, which might create some of that audit risk? 
So again, depending on your process and how your organization operates, there might be a myriad of different approaches that organizations take. Um, and again, based on having a more manual process of how you collect the certificates, um, who's actually reviewing the certificates to make sure they're valid, um, and do they have the expertise to do that, and then how you're actually storing the certificates can all create some of those, those challenges around really helping you effectively managing the process. Um, and all of those things, again, uh, can make the, the process more time consuming and definitely when an auditor comes in, make it much more difficult to uh, track things down to provide that adequate audit defense um, when you're taking a more reactive approach. All right, Jordan, you want to move us, move us ahead here? So um, just about to hand things off to Jordan to dive into the overview of, of CERT Manager, but we wanted to organize the, the conversation and how we show the solution today really and how you can uh, move away from that reactive approach into a more proactive approach with CERT Manager. And we've really broken that down into three steps, which is how can you centralize and take the existing process that you have today or your existing situation and really bring that up uh, a level where you, you really get your existing house in order in terms of centralizing all your exemption data and bringing it together improving that visibility and giving you the ability then to ongoing manage the process better and give you a better process for being able to defend your against an audit. So the first step we're going to talk about here is how do you, how do you centralize your process, get all of your exemption data in one place um, and all of your certificates in one place so that you can really get a good sense and have full visibility and get a good sense of where your risks might be. Um, so with that, I'll hand it off to you, Jordan, and you, you want to take us through this uh, first part of the process, which is centralize. Sure thing. Thanks. So I will exit out of the PowerPoint here. All right, perfect. Um, so this is Jordan Meeks, uh, as Mark mentioned, sales engineer here at Sovo. So at this point, we'll actually take a look at the CERT Manager solution itself. I um, mean, you're actually seeing the UI on the screen here. And this is a web-based application that your users can have access to. And as Mark alluded to, allow you to centralize the uh, management of your exemption certificate process. A lot of times when we speak with clients, um, certain parts of the exemption certificate process are in oftentimes disparate systems, right? You might have exempt customers flagged in your ERP or CRM. You actually have the images somewhere in a filing cabinet or in shared drives. And then you're also maintaining a spreadsheet of all the actual exemptions. That way you can do your uh, validation at the end of the month and make sure everything's complete and not expired. So part of the challenge is just where do you start with the centralization? And that's the beauty of the CERT Manager solution is that it assists with the centralization and being able to just very easily consolidate all these pieces of information into one user interface. So the first part is getting your exempt customers in. And so that's what you're seeing on the screen here. There's a couple ways that you can do that. Uh, one is by adding customers on a one-off basis. And you can see I'm required to fill in a couple pieces of information. Um, the other elements are optional, but good to have, like contact name and contact email, and you can have multiple locations uh, per your customer accounts. Another way you could do this is via a bulk upload. So we would provide a CSV template of all those data elements I just showed, and our customers who are leveraging this solution today, and what some of them will do is on a particular frequency, maybe it's a daily or a weekly activity, they'll take the template, run a query out of their ERP or CRM, so the uh, customer information is extracted in that exact format and just drag and drop the template here. And then the third way that our customers are um, adding their customers is via an API, which is basically just a prog programmatic way of one system, your ERP or CRM, telling another system, in this case, Cert Manager, that it has information. So send this customer or updated customer to the Cert Manager solution. And one important thing to note is this TWE column um, with all these exclamation points here. It, the, the CERT Manager solution does integrate with our uh, cloud-based tax determination engine. And so how do you have that one cohesive ecosystem between your CERT Manager solution and the tax engine to make sure as you're running transactions through your ERP, um, the engine is accounting for your exemption certificates on file here is by simply just clicking sync customers to TWA, to the engine. And what that's gonna do, just send all this customer information to the engine. Um, so it's really as simple as that. Okay. Second is the images. So actually populating um, and tying the images to our customer records. So again, there's a couple ways to, that you can do that. 
And if you already have your images on a shared drive somewhere in PDF, it's all that much easier. So we can come here and drag and drop our PDF images. We can just grab them from our, our desktop here. And we can do multiple at one time. We can do one at a time. We can do 100 at a time. I um, mean, you can see I'm uploading nine files, and it takes less than a, a full sentence of me trying to explain it. So it really can happen that quickly. Similar to customers, you can also upload all this information via a bulk upload. So we could provide a template of all the information as far as who is the customer, what's the exempt reason, critical dates like effective and expiration date, the jurisdiction that the certificates are for, and then with the added column of file name, which is essentially what I just uploaded here. And what that will do is automatically tie all the exemption information to the exemption image. Okay. Another way that you could do that is by coming in here and viewing and converting the exemption. So you can see I actually have the image that I uploaded on the right-hand side here where I can scroll up and down and zoom in to see particular details. And I'm prompted on the, on the left-hand side here to do a few things. One is tie it to a customer. Two is what's the reason for the exemption. In this case, it's a resale. Is it signed, yes or no? Um, and then what's the jurisdiction that it's for? And you can even set this up such that, um, as most of us know, Florida resale certificates, they expire every calendar year. So you can set the solution up such that when you have Florida, and if I add in my effective date, it's gonna automatically populate the expiration of the plus one year. So it can help automate some of that as well. Now we can create our exemption certificate here. And all our um, complete or incomplete exemption certificates will lie in the exemptions tab where we can get a big picture of what our organization is looking at from an exemption certificate standpoint. And we can sort and filter by all these columns here to see particular information that we're looking for, or just to get a glimpse of, you know, for instance, what, what exemption certificates are expiring soon. So that's well, what we'll get into next here. Um, but to summarize the, the benefits of the centralizing process, really it's a very user friendly user interface. We've taken our users um, experience heavily into mind when creating the cert manager solution and knowing that you all have plenty of other things that are going on in your lives that you don't need to spend hours on end to try to learn a, a brand new system that's difficult to use. So we've sought out to make the most intuitive solution possible. Hopefully that was evident, evident there. And so a uh, simplified um, setup. And so I showed you can be done uh, very easily on your own. We also have a managed services option that if you don't have the resources or you're just looking to offload that so you can dedicate your time to a new project, um, our team that sits in our Boston office can do all the uh, management of scanning and indexing and validating your exemption certificates for you. And again, just moving forward with confidence is a key thing here. I know oftentimes confidence is an intangible benefit of some of the solutions that we have to offer, but is um, cited as one of the, the greatest benefits that our clients find um, in our solutions and can be very easily shown here with the, the centralization process. Excellent. Um, one of the things too, as you saw, uh, as Jordan was showing that uh, view uh, in terms of being able to take some of that data um, right from a certificate and, and manage things in that view. The other advantage of having the centralized process is um, having that access to the, the tax experts, if you will, who are really managing the process overall. Uh, and as those certificates come in, being able to actually have an easy way to pull them up and, and look at them and making sure that uh, they are validated properly by the folks who would know uh, in looking at a certificate to say, hey, yes, this is a valid certificate for this exemption that's being claimed, and do we have all the right information to be able to manage it ongoing? Um, so a couple of, of, of definite benefits there. Bring it all together and get your getting your house in order. So hopefully through that you saw um, you know a way that you know you can pretty easily take your existing process, begin to work with Cert Manager and get your existing house in order, and then all of a sudden have everything in one centralized place and, and have that visibility to understand where am I protected, where am I in good shape, and where potentially some of those gaps are and those risks are. Moving forward from there, then we, we're going to have that that beginning process, but now. We, we understand some of those things. Now, how do we manage the process more effectively uh, moving forward? And so uh, the next uh, set of tools that we wanna show you is how you can um, utilize some existing filters in there to help understand where some of those gaps might be, what are upcoming certificates that might be expiring, 
um, an integrated email that you can use to help do some of that and simplify some of that outreach, and then how your customers can actually submit those uh, exemption certificates in a, in a really confined, closed-loop process. Um, and then also um, to uh, to make sure, again, that your your, your team is, is looking at those and uh, validating them properly ongoing and then giving you some visibility to how you can manage the process more effectively moving forward. So um, the next... That's the next uh, step of the process here that Jordan's going to show you some of these additional tools. Perfect. Yep. So now we have tied all our, our certificates to our customers and we can see our exemptions now and have that full picture here. Again, we can sort and filter by all this data. We can also um, create uh, more detailed reports. We have, I'll show in a moment here, a um, enhanced uh, reporting capability so we can create reports similar to what I'm showing here, which is just uh, by a legal entity, our customers that have expiring exemption certificates within 90 days in a very filterable um, Excel spreadsheet. So I'll show how we can create those. And once we have an idea of what we're looking at from an exemption standpoint, we can start to take some intelligent action upon this. So if we find out that we have a bunch of customer records in here with no ex exemption certificates tied to them, they're missing their exemption certificates, we can create an email campaign through the solution very easily. I'll create one from a template here looks pretty similar to how you might create one within Outlook or Gmail, whatever you, uh, our customers leverage. And you can create a subject, you can create a message body, and you can also add your own company email in here. So we'll, we'll actually send these um, emails out to all the customers that you select. And uh, one of the benefits is that you can have your own email here and have a back and forth conversation with your customers who maybe aren't as familiar with exemption certificates. So from here, we want to select who to receive this message. It can be a blanket email to all our customers, but generally our clients are using the customer chooser to refine who we want to send this to. It can be by customer name or number, maybe a jurisdiction we want to send it to all our, our customers in that jurisdiction, exemptions that are expiring, or in this case we'll do customers who have missing exemption certificates. And we'll search the solution for that, and it'll come back with two customers who have missing exemption certificates. So we'll add them to the list. From here, we can actually send this email out directly from the solution. Um, and we can also add in a certificate upload link that can uh, act as basically a self-service for your customers to upload their exemption certificates for you. And what that would look like if they clicked on the link here is this. One, as a security measure, making sure that they're a real human. And then a very similar look and feel drag and drop functionality, as I just showed how you might drag and drop your exemption certificates internally. And so now your customers can choose their files from their desktop and upload them to the solution for you. And those will await the internal users in the queue here with all the other internal submitted exemption certificates with the caveat of saying this is submitted externally from one of your customers. So from there, it's the same process of viewing and converting, tagging it to that customer, making sure it's complete, um, and then creating that exemption. So really this gives you um, the ability, as, as we summarize the benefits here, gives you the ability to run some different reports and do some filtering and have that full picture of what you have in the system. And if there are particular cases where you need to reach out to your customers to get additional information or details, you have the ability to do so right within the solution itself with a few clicks of a button. So you can um, rest assured, again, that confidence factor that you have valid documentation in a proactive method um, prior to in the unfortunate event of auditors coming in. Yes, unfortunate or uh, inevitable, <laughs> as as, uh, as we know. Um, the the uh, the audit thing is always going to be a piece of uh, the reality. And I think, as we mentioned, we know you know these certificates given. Um, the, the increased scrutiny that the auditors are giving, um, certainly the uh, the data that's coming through in our in filings is uh, is is low hanging fruit for them. So, um, as we've talked through these first couple of stages of the process, hopefully you've seen some of the benefits of, of again bringing the process together. Some of these tools that can really help you streamline the process of management. So, as we talked about earlier, some of those. Uh, business problems in terms of how this is a time intensive process and one of the most difficult things to manage, um, how you might be able to streamline your existing process doing some of that. Um, the last piece that we want to talk about, uh, as we just alluded to, is uh, in the inevitable uh, case that uh, the auditor does come in and um, do a uh, sales and use tax audit uh, on your particular organization, 
giving you again the confidence to know that hey I've got the tools and I've got really good visibility and confidence that um, I, I have the certificates that I need um, for the exemptions that we're applying for our, our existing customers when they come in and say hey I want to see um, this information, you've readily got that at your fingertips and you're able to produce that for the auditor. So um, Jordan's going to take you through this last piece here to show you some of the tools in Serve Manager that can help really streamline that process. Yep, so everything we've shown up to this point is um, centralizing the information, helping you have visibility and make um, intelligent decisions based on all your exemption certificates uh, in advance of audits. So now, what happens when an audit actually comes? What are you able to do? Um, and so you're able to pull out the exemption certificates that you're required from your auditor um, in a couple ways. One is by simply the state. So maybe we have uh, California coming in. They're going to audit us. They want to see all our exemption certificates from their jurisdiction. So we can download um, those exemption certificates, which is going to produce a file right on our um, desktop here of downloads. And we can go in here and we can see that we have three California uh, manufacturing exemption certificates within the system. And so we can send these to our auditor. We can look at these ourselves just to make sure they are complete, make the um, appropriate action if they're not. Um, but from a receiving perspective, it's as simple as downloading the exemptions here. What our customers also tell us is that oftentimes auditors will, will want to refine uh, the sample size of what they're looking for from an exemption perspective. They might want to see um, from a three-month window all the exempt transactions um, and with a combination of some tools we have with our um, tax determination engine to actually show those transactions or um, some tools you might have within your ERP, um, you can pull all the customer numbers and customer um, names of those customers who have exempt transactions over that three month window and just drag and drop those customer numbers here to pull specifically what your auditor is looking for the exemption certificates for those transactions. Okay. So really the goal here is to you know, centralize everything and manage your exemptions um, and then communicate out to your customers and give them a self service option um, to get the information in and then give you the confidence that when you're audited you're able to produce those reports and produce uh, image files that are going to satisfy the auditor's request and ideally reduce your penalties because you've, you've been proactive throughout the process. And then of course, reduce that frequency of future audits because they're not finding anything, therefore you're less of a target. Absolutely, and I think another benefit of this too is it really gives you the tools as the, the, the tax team or the finance team who's ever managing this to really uh, manage and execute that uh, audit uh, defense process on your own as well. I know and we hear from a lot of uh, organizations that uh, um, this is a, a place where IT frequently has to get involved and um, we, need there, we need to go to IT to pull out the, the right files or to pull the right reports and so forth. And this is one of those things where it really gives you the tools to manage the process on your own and uh, provide some additional benefit of not having to get IT involved as well. All right, so hopefully you've seen through this, this three-step process um, how you can leverage some of the tools in CERT Manager and think about your existing process that you have and apply some of these um, best practices in this workflow and how that might be able to improve your process as well. Um, as Jordan mentioned, um, CERT Manager is part of our intelligent compliance platform, which is um, works together with our, our cloud uh, global tax determination solution. Uh, many of you um, might be asking, oh, well, I, we, we leverage SUT for our determination, and uh, what about SUT? How would I use a CERT Manager with SUT? Um, Jordan, you want to just give everybody a quick overview on how they could use CERT Manager with SUT? Yeah, absolutely. So with our um, global tax determination engine, as I, as I showed, it's really, really easy how this integrates together just by syncing all the information. Um, but what we're evaluating for the SUT system, for those that are um, still finding value within the uh, on-premise solution, is more of a batch-based load. So at the end of a specific period, whether that's hourly, daily, weekly, whatever it might be, the system can produce a flat file that can then be loaded into the step system, which many of you, I'm sure, leverage um, today within SUT to keep the system in sync with the exemptions. So as you're running your transactions through your ERP, SUT is able to leverage the exemptions that you have on file. And the biggest benefit that we see in the CERT Manager system for SUT clients is really the ability to get your arms around the images and the exemptions themselves, uh, but also the reporting that you're able to do for the audit defense. So we would be able to tie into um, the step system 
with the file-based integration for SUT customers. Excellent. All right, you want to take us to the, the next slide, Jordan? Um, just quickly, I, I think just to mention um, quickly, the uh, CERT Manager is, is, as I mentioned, one of the solutions we have as part of the Intelligent Compliance Cloud. And, and um, we find in a lot of cases, clients may not be uh, as aware, depending on what solution they have, of um, all of the offerings that, that Sobos has. And I think just touching on this really briefly, um, again, as we talk to organizations about uh, as they grow and as they change um, and their um, technology ecosystem evolves in terms of the types of transaction processing systems that they're using and or different business units and M&A, um, providing for that really uh, centralized process of being able to pull all that data together and have a fully integrated solution, um, it makes it really hard when you've got multiple systems or a patchwork of systems and you're calculating tax in different ways across your organization. So this just really provides a, 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 a quick glimpse of the, the full end-to-end -end solution uh, for the Intelligent Compliance Cloud for sales and use tax compliance, beginning with the the cloud um, compliance engine, the S1 platform, how that works together with the global tax determination and cert manager, both on your purchases and uh, what you might be selling to make sure that you're applying the right uh, tax taxability to those particular transactions and exemptions. And then that data flowing all together and having full visibility in that uh, reporting and analytics and then tying it together with your filing and that full end-to-end -end process. So um, just really showing this as kind of where cert manager fits into the full ecosystem um, of the, uh, the cloud-based Sobo solution. Uh, and as you think about uh, potentially where your business is going and then maybe some of the other challenges that you might be having uh, around determination or visibility to your reporting and filing, uh, something to uh, think about. Um, and as we wrap up here, we just have one uh, question for you, uh, which is, um, and uh, pa Paxton here will uh, launch just a, a quick um, polling question for you here, which is, um, let us know if you're interested in learning more about Cert Manager and talking to uh, one of the Sobos folks about how um, really thinking best practices around your certificate management process or how you might um, leverage the, tech, the uh, capabilities of Cert Manager to improve your process. Um, let us know here. So we'll launch this and, and um, you can let us know yes or no if, you, if you'd like to have a conversation with somebody. Um, we are right up against uh, the top of the hour. Um, and so if there, we can take like one minute here to see if there are any questions. I haven't seen any questions come in yet, uh, but we can just uh, pause here for a minute. And if anybody does have any questions, we can hang here for a minute and hopefully we can answer them. All right, I uh, still haven't seen any come in. So um, that's that's totally fine. So hopefully uh, through the polling question, you uh, can answer that. Um, if you do have specific questions, um, feel free to reach out to your, um, your uh, account representative um, or certainly, uh, you know, connect with uh, uh, any one of us, uh, Jordan or I. Um, we will have some, Jordan, if you wanna go to the next slide, here's a couple of ways to get in contact with us. Um, so if you are uh, interested in learning more, you can use one of these uh, venues as well uh, to get a hold of, of any of us, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you do have. Um, again, thanks again, everybody, for taking a quick half hour with us uh, this morning, learning a little bit more about CERT Manager. Hopefully, you'll take away a few things that can uh, help you think about your exemption certificate management process, and, um, and we will uh, see you on the next webinar. Have a great morning, everybody.